So the reality is very few people are even aware of Web3, despite a decade of innovation. Most people are still living in the Web2 paradigm, including the people working in Web3. We've actually been building and upgrading the functionality of the internet. So what this means is we kind of have this parallel internet um, that's being underutilized. I'm Jamie Burke of Outlier Ventures, and I'm going to be talking about the post-web. So a fair criticism for Web3 is that Adoption has been really low, whether that's as a percentage of the developer population or penetration into consumer internet. And the reality is that's because it's incredibly complex to use. We've got all this new functionality for the internet to kind of upgrade the internet, and yet it's been unusable for most people. The post-web is effectively when we shift from the attention economy to the intention economy by leveraging agentic networks and LLMs, both as a backend to coordinate and leverage the complexity of Web3 and a front end to be able to communicate with it in a more natural language format. So you can think about this as me either being able to kind of manually turn up and down the volume of immersion, reducing the web to a very thin format and interface all the way up to fully immersive virtual worlds. And even my AI will be able to predict my state, my mood, or the mode that I'm in at that time of day, or based upon environmental factors. So the post-web will have five characteristics to it. The first one is that it will be verifiable. The entire value chain about how I interact with various participants will be verifiable to me and other stakeholders. Second is it will be intent-based. Intents will direct and coordinate and organize the internet. The third thing is it will be deterministic. It will take on the characteristics of smart contracts, but also allow for adaptability and dynamism by leveraging agents. The fourth is it will be sovereign. It will extend and enshrine my sovereignty as a user in a more user-centric web. And the fifth thing is it will be hyper-contextual. Everything will know the specific context I'm in and it will deliver the right and appropriate interface. As we begin to think around intention theory and how agents are going to coordinate and collaborate at scale. Things like DAOs and DAO infrastructure and tooling become even more important. And where humans have failed to manage the complexity and to follow the logic implied in their organization, agents, of course, will have no problem with this. So we believe the post-web era and the process of convergence has the capability to 100x the individual, whether that's as a person, just looking to upgrade their financial literacy and make more of their assets through things like DeFi, trading strategies, or to tap into the latent capacity and earn yield from things like um, spare compute and storage and their home devices. Whether it's the indie filmmaker who wants to be able to have the capabilities to produce uh, equivalent of a Hollywood movie, or the independent developer, be that an application developer or a game developer, who again can kind of have the capabilities of a gaming studio or a software company. All of these things become possible as we can leverage large language models, we can put agents to work, and we can increasingly guarantee the provenance of the assets that we create by leveraging Web3 technologies in order that we create a universal library of content um, with baked in loyalties. So as we begin to entrust more and more of our personhood to agents, whether that's personal information and context to social or kind of legal contractual personhood, really we need forms of AI that we can trust because increasingly what we're actually doing is we're going to begin to extend our entire consciousness to the internet. So not only does it need a new privacy paradigm, it needs forms of sovereign AI and sovereign agents to represent us, to manage that personhood. 
but it also needs an entirely new computing paradigm, which will be a hybrid of cloud, edge, and then local compute. Local compute being the device in my pocket or devices at home that I can control and trust. What's really interesting and exciting about seeing convergence happen now real time is that there are these flywheels developing um, within each technology domain, deep in DAI and RWA, which we believe will begin to reinforce one another to create a super cycle. If we look in the world of deep in, we're beginning to see the principles of how the Bitcoin network has been rolled out globally to become one of the most efficient computer networks in the world applied to other forms of digital physical infrastructure, whether that's uh, decentralizing with cloud, edge compute, or machine vision and learning. This super cycle will suck in both supply and demand, bringing on-chain assets, users, data. We're already seeing huge material efficiency gains of up to one third of the cost of AWS cloud through more distributed and decentralized uh, networks. And perhaps most exciting is that we think this will allow the digital assets that underpin these new protocols to transform into digital commodities. And these digital commodities are linked to the real world. They're linked to real world demand and supply, real world assets. And as a consequence, they're easy or easier for TradFi, traditional finance, to both understand, to perform fundamental analysis on, and as a consequence, invest in and create financial products, be that ETFs or indices. So we believe directionally where the post web takes us is to something called the computable economy where effectively the technologies and principles of Web3 get extended into every facet of the global economy, providing huge gains in optimization, um, velocity of money, GDP growth, as the economy as a whole takes on the characteristics of a computer where it can be more deterministic, more predictive, and more self-optimizing and autonomous. We believe these degrees of autonomy will extend into the real world from software to physical robotics that will begin to navigate the world, whether it's autonomous driving and cars to robots in stores and the home. These things will all be learning and creating feedback loops and inference on AI models. And so really we're looking at what is the technology stack and paradigm that can enable this collaboration of edge inference and learning from machines in the real world to training AI models that can help direct them. We believe, again, this requires a super intelligence predicated on forms, new forms of collaborative AI that are only possible by leveraging Web3 infrastructure and more trustless distributed and decentralized systems. Sign up to be the first to hear about our vision for the post-web. Mm -hmm.